The darkness flickers in the corner of your eye. A dark shape seems to pass in the hall. Was it a trick of the light? One's imagination filling the gaps left by the quivering flame of the lamp in your hand? In the Scarlet Hotel, there is a legend, they say. They say that the hotel has seen so much evil that the darkness itself has become alive. Does it call to you? Will it consume you? Will you surrender to it? Elias Willoughby was a showman during the late Victorian period, looking to transact a bit of discreet business with the captain of a schooner, which had slipped quietly into the docks only that afternoon. The hotel was perfect for it. A newly built venue, already known for the eccentricities of its guests, it also had the benefit of being well away from the prying eyes of any of the customs agents and revenuers who combed the New York waterfront. He passed through the little throng of vacationers and socialites, tapping the brim of his bowler with his walking stick in the briefest acknowledgement of those who noticed him. Continuing on into the bowels of the hotel, he found himself before the appointed door and rapped upon it with the appointed cadence, glancing furtively up and down the hall before being admitted within. What have you got for me this time, he grumbled. Don't tell me it's another monstrosity in a jar. Do you think I would bring all this way for a mere artifact? The reply came in a heavy Irish accent, the indignation of which was punctuated by the adjustment of a pair of round spectacles. This is a live specimen, he protested, motioning to the cage which had been arranged under a heavy black cloth in the very center of the room. He then swept toward the showman and continued in a dramatic and conspiratorial tone. I have here, he began, taking a fold of the cover cloth in hand, a genuine chiffre, a child taken by the fay and changed. She were reclaimed from the wee folk at a fairy fort in Limerick. Elias waved his hand with annoyance. Yes, yes. I'll thank you to leave the writing of the playbills to me, thank you very much. Just show me the damned thing. The Irishman's nose wriggled as he bit back a repost. Instead, he simply turned to the cage and yanked away the cloth. Elias peered within the bars of the cage and blinked. There's nothing, he began, and then he hesitated, moving his head to one side as he attempted to make sense of what he was seeing. It wasn't so much a thing as a not something. The eye tended to slide off of it. Not quite a cloud and not quite a shape, but Elias could definitely tell there was something there, though he couldn't quite bring his eyes to settle upon what. The showman jumped when the shipper sent a dull, resonant bong through the room by furiously striking the bars of the cage with a poker. Proper now, show yourself proper. There was a breathy, feminine gasp of fright, and to the shadow, the knot thing seemed to congeal. It was almost as if she was drawing the dancing darkness itself within her. After a few moments, a form emerged, 
a small woman in a long black dress. First, it seemed like a silhouette, but then the surface texture of skin and hair could be made out. It was definitely a someone, but she was still, from head to toe, the color of coal. After a few moments, the showman spoke. Well, he began in a tone intended to betray his amazement. It would be difficult to light such an exhibition, wouldn't it? Stage design, extra lighting. He sucked his teeth. Expensive. Very expensive, indeed. He walked around the cage, regarding the woman looking back at him from behind the bars. And who might you be, miss? The shipper interjected, his voice booming in the small space. The living darkness, he proclaimed. But there was another sound, a much softer one. Elias leaned close to the cage. What? Kaelin, came the soft reply, now audible without the shipper's theatrics. Kaelin, Elias repeated, offering a smile he intended to appear disarming. What would you say to a career in show business? Room and board fully provided, travel the country, a life in the limelight with your adoring fans at every stop. He punctuated the offer with a presumptuous chuckle. Before he even noticed the girl's shiver upon hearing the word limelight, he'd already turned his attention back to the shipper. Why is she in a cage, he asked, his nose wrinkling with concern. She's not some sort of problem, is she? The shipper's protestations seemed to fade from Kaylin's awareness, the background noise as her thoughts turned inward. They didn't notice as her shape began to once again diffuse and blend into the shadow. She barely noticed as the two men left the room to settle the particulars of her purchase over whiskey and cigars in the hotel's parlor. She hugged her knees and pressed her back into the corner of her cage. She gave no audible vent to the despondence she felt at being caged in front of the burning intensity of limelights. Even so, something in the hotel seemed to hear her silent cries. Even in the early days, the hotel was a place where things were hidden away, where lamp wicks were turned low and where the miasma of unrequited suffering had already seeped into the very plaster and wood of the walls themselves. It was a message without words, a sigh in the night that anyone else might have missed. An offer and a price. The two men were laughing when they returned to the room, warmed by whiskey and the satisfaction of a good deal well struck. Elias was the first to notice that the cage was empty. Where is she gone then, he barked, storming toward the empty cage. I thought you said she wasn't a problem. The shipper was already wielding his poker stalking toward the empty cage in hopes that a warning blow might somehow cause his merchandise to reappear. Neither noticed the room around them seeming to dissolve into an abyssal blackness. When the howling void collapsed inward to consume them both, their screams could not be heard. Not on this plane of existence, nor any other. Neither the disappearances nor the odd finding of the empty cage in an abandoned room 
seemed to impress Long upon the legacy of the Scarlet Hotel, particularly in comparison to the tales that would come later. But in the decades that followed, there would be sightings of a girl in shadow. On the few occasions she took visible form, sometimes she appeared dressed in that simple gown, sometimes a flapper's dress and cloche hat, sometimes in bell-bottoms with long hair restrained only by a headband. It is said that she is now merged with the darkness of the hotel itself, gathering up every secret hidden away in corners and closets, hearing every unspoken cry in the night. For what purpose, who can say? But one thing is certain, the darkness moves and it is alive.